This is Yellow Touch Mobile Polishing and Detailing. I'm working on this trailer right here. And I thought may as well make a quick how-to video if you're ever interested in polishing your trailer yourself. First few things that I want to say about it, don't underestimate the job. Um, it's very, very heavy on the body. These grinders are not very light. They're about 20 pounds, 18 pounds or something like that. And you're holding it for I don't know, cutting process about 20, 25 hours at least. And then your coloring or your second cut and then a finish. So you're holding that grinder for quite a while. You're gonna push on a little bit. So it's physical, you'll get sore pretty quickly. I'm gonna get closer up, see what products I'm gonna use. So first things that you wanna have is a variable speed grinder for sanding, and polishing, finishing polishing, because you want to do that with lower RPM. A 6,000 RPM grinder. This is a D28499 DeWalt, and the Makita would be a GA7021, available in the US only. You cannot get them in the States. Um, a flexible backing plate, it's always nice. And I use a half inch foam interface pad, so it's a little bit more forgiving. Cutting compound, finishing compound, a orange buff, yellow buff, white buff, a set of safety flanges. When you're doing a big job like this, I recommend the centerless safety flanges um, because when a buff is on there, it'll just center better, it's safer, it holds the clinch ring down better, and there's less vibrations. And um, every little bit of vibrations that you can save will be very much appreciated at the end of the day. A rake to clean off your buff and to prep your cutting buff. I like to use a pouch. I put it right on my belt so I can put my compound in there so I don't have to bend down 500 times. 220 grit. When the surface is bad like that, you're gonna wanna use a 220 grit or even 120, but this one is getting a 220. Then I follow up with a 500 grit and 800 grit. This is all hook and loop. Velcro, um, don't get the sticky stuff because it's just not worth it. Set of earmuffs, some tunes are nice. These are 3M Ward tunes. They're amazing. The battery lasts is very long, quality sound. A good respirator, full face is a must because uh, you want to save your eyes at the same time, right? Let's get down to it. So I'm sanding down with a 220 grit right now. Um, full speed, this machine is 3200 RPMs, you can also use the wall uh, 3500 RPMs, it's a perfect speed for some heavy sanding, a little bit faster sometimes, it's nice too, you'll be using different machines, but on this trailer here, this is the easiest, strongest, most reliable machine to use. Um, as you can see, I hold it completely flat and I apply a little bit more pressure of the opposite side to where I travel. Um, reason being is you'll be getting a smoother finish with your sanding paper. So you've seen the 220, I did two passes on it um, because the surface was pretty bad. Um, it's, re it's really, really pitted, right? So. I just wanted to do a second pass. Now this is a 500 grit. Um, what I'm doing with that now is moving the opposite direction. So I call this technique the cross sanding. Cross sanding is nice because you can actually see in the light if you properly removed um, the sanding scratches from the previous step, right? So. This, uh, th this is really easy to see. You can really cancel the scratches out this way. Get the bottom edge nice and straight. Get that nice and clean. Very important. Um, right now I'm switching out to an 800 grit. And all at the same RPM as well. It's all at max speed, 3200 RPM. And again, I'm changing the direction, so the half a moon scratches from rotary sanding is um, just opposite from each other, so you can actually see if you properly remove them. 
You can go side to side too, just, and you can still see it, but it's, it's a little bit more, uh, you need a little bit of experience for that. It's easier to see that way. This is a cutting buff, the orange cutting buff, the triple E. Um, when I do bigger surfaces, what I like to do, I like to spray a little bit of compound directly to the surface so I don't need to stop so often and, um, and like, recharge my buff with compound. I'm starting on a very vertical line um, and like slowly tilt the buffing wheel up straight so that I can remove all those sanding marks from the bottom edge really nicely and have a very crisp tight finish. As these panels were the, where they meet, there's a little bit of space, a little tiny gap. So those spots were a little bit more difficult to sand out. Um, and instead of chasing that, all I did is uh, a cutting pattern on it. So I just went straight up. So I was able to get that nice and clean before I start moving over them pretty quickly. So they had a little bit more attention, so they blend right in. Spraying onto the surface is nice because it's uh, it's very aggressive. It keeps the surface kind of cold at the same time. If you would start from the top and hold the compound to the buff and slowly move down, like do a reverse cut and, and like melt the compound to the surface, which which is like a lot of people do it. I've done it many times. But then when you start your finishing process, you can see that you use that technique. Um, it's, it's kind of ugly and very difficult to get out. If you feel like your buff needs a little bit more um, more juice, like a little stronger, I apply a little bit more compound, I'll just take it off, reapply, or if you moved over and you're like, oh, uh, there's still some sanding marks out there, let's chase those again. Just go back down and go over them once more and they should be all out. See me check there for sanding marks real quick. It's very important. Check your work. It's a lot easier to do that in the cutting process than it is in um, when you're finishing. So I just switched over to a yellow buff. Also 6,000 RPM. Same compound, triple E. That's to refine the cutting marks. And whenever the cutting marks are refined, you see already like the shine is already starting to get a lot nicer, brighter, but if you really look in the light, it's still pretty hashy because it's still quite an aggressive step. But this step here, it really helps bring that surface to a, to a smooth, to a smooth surface so you can actually finish it really nicely. Just reapply a little bit of compound once in a while. Rake your buff every time so it's clean. It really cleans it up very nicely. I'm switching over to a cotton untreated on the variable speed. I like to use that buffing wheel around 28 up to 3200 RPMs. If the buff is like really new, I'll slow it down a little bit. When it gets a little smaller, I'll crank it up a little bit. Rake it every time you apply compound, and um, purple compound as well. And this is just the most satisfying and the quickest step of the whole process in polishing. After this, everything will be done. That's the perfect mirror finish. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, maybe in the light, there's some pitting in there. Yeah, you can chase all the pits and get all that out, but what's gonna happen is there's not gonna be very much material left, right? So, do you really wanna go out and start sanding with probably 120, do three, four, five passes? and then do all the other steps so you're doing five six steps of sanding no rather not let's go have a look at the other side of the trailer because that's all done when you do that process of sanding and the polishing over literally every single square inch on this thing it'll look like that 
nice and even no yellow gold lines in it this trailer was pretty rough but it actually came out pretty nice I impressed myself with it to be honest now I've got to do the back start sanding on that it was pretty that was really bad um, I actually did 120 uh, the back side Now I'm going to continue sanding and uh, get the rest of the trailer looking like that. Quite some difference. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned something today and uh, have fun. Be safe.